Hey folks, hello and welcome to the Relaxed Mail and I want to thank you for again for uh, tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be talking about anger. Still, the, the third installment and uh, actually I think it's going to be the last one because I want to talk about ways that you can actually kind of prevent anger. As a matter of fact, we want to talk about seven different ways that you can prevent anger. Uh, because anger, as we talked beforehand, is actually your actions. These are nothing more than what you feel um, is, uh, though you may feel that somebody else's uh, uh, problem is actually all your choice. You've made the choice to be angry for whatever reason. Um, but there are things and triggers that have, and um, correction, first off, let me talk about triggers because triggers trigger me. Trigger is another form of playing a victim. All right, they triggered me. We know what uh, when something is being triggered, that is an action that takes place at, by the by the uh, actions of another item. A finger pulls a trigger, which causes a gun to tr fire. The gun's not going to fire unless you pull that trigger, unless it is triggered by somebody else. So, it is a word often used these days to cite a victimhood mentality. So we want to we want to knock the old trigger thing off. So, but what happens? What causes you to to be angry? What what? Uh, how can you prevent and mitigate the chances of getting angry? And that's actually what I want to talk about today. Um, so, how do you stop from getting so mad? First way is actually really difficult, especially with it being uh, an election year. But Stop watching the news. The news is probably the most irrelevant thing to happen to go on in your life ever. Yeah, you think you're getting some great information, you're finding stuff out, but it's not anything that's really going to help you. All right. Yeah, you may end up feeling really bad that there's an earthquake going on, and you uh, uh, and you may want to help out the victims of that of that earthquake. All right. You can find that out through Facebook. You can find that out any other way, but sitting down and watching Fox News, watching uh, CNN, MSNBC, or any, even your local news uh, uh, affiliates are not going to fix the issue at all. Um, what it, all it's going to do is it's going to end up just causing stress in your, in your system because they're going to talk about stuff that irritates you. That's how they get a reaction. They want to incite an emotional response from you. So they're going to come up with as many, if it bleeds, it leads types of stories as they could possibly find. The, if the man bites dog uh, story comes along, you know they're going to show it right before a man rescues a dog. They may end up needing a uh, a a human interest story to kind of you know kind of balance things out a little bit but guess what that's something they put in the 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 10 45 the 45 uh, minutes past the hour segment the place where most people are starting to get re ready for uh, for supper and so it's it's just something that's being talked about behind scenes the important stuff is talked about at the beginning and the most heavily advertised stuff that they talk about is shown at the very end. Everything in the middle is just, it's literally filler with the only important stuff being what the weather's doing. If you're listening and wanting to know about the weather, then you, all right, you've got, you've got the, the important information right there. Um, and so, because it, obviously it's good to know about the weather. So, but news as a whole uh, doesn't help you. It does, it's irrelevant, it's inconsequential to how you're going to live your life. So stop watching the news. The news isn't going to help you. All they are there to do is to make sure that you get worked up. Um, they've shown, there are studies that show that people who are happier, uh, who are typically uh, happy, don't watch the news. And those who are typically angry and, and fed up, typically watch the news they read the news they do everything they do is news oriented instead of bettering themselves they are more interested in what other people are doing so it is basically the gossip column it's the gossip uh, mill and fact basic gossips is how i heard one man actually call it and i thought that was just amazingly brilliant so another thing is just breathe 
I used to get so much in, into so much trouble whenever I was growing up because my parents would be, oh, you know, I'd do something dumb. And they would get to working and start to haul and break, and I would breathe. You'll live longer. Key point, especially if you are a teenager, don't say that to an adult. Uh, that's, yeah, you don't want to do that because that's just going to cause them to get even angrier. So, but breathe, what happens when you, you breathe is you're actually just changing a, a, a reaction and a sensation um, to, uh, to more of an exhilaration. So, if you are, I forget the uh, doctor's, uh, doctor's name, but there was a, a doctor actually mentioned that was talked about in uh, Gay Hendricks' book, The Big Leap. Where if you breathe, breathing is uh, the act of changing fear into exhilaration, into excitement. Because um, if you're afraid, <gasps> you're not going to breathe. You're going to hold it in. You get angry. <gasps> you're, you're actually trying to suffocate happiness. Your body, in reaction, is trying to suffocate fear. Fear often leads to suffering. Suffering leads to hate and hate. Means, you know, that whole thing really bad Yoda impression so but anyhow just take five minutes something's hacking you off juniors walk drawn on the walls that you just painted two weeks ago with with a grease marker or grease pen um, what are you gonna do well you're gonna holler and scream but if you st you will actually save yourself a lot of problems and stuff if you just go <laughs> and walk out Take a few deep breaths and collect your collect your thoughts before you go in there. Most people do things when under anger that they will regret down the road, um, and you can prevent that re uh, regret easily by just not reacting instant at that very moment and just stopping and breathing first. Um, another way is if you are being say hounded by your boss uh, your boss is uh, you've got a co-worker who's just you know an asshole and you want to be able to uh, and you're you're feeling the pressure that he's causing and it's causing you to get uh, you know getting angry getting mad and you want to you can do two things you can either hold it in which is never good you don't ever want to hold in an emotion because it man it turns itself uh, and uh, into something that you do not want. It's like Gage from uh, the uh, Pet Cemetery. It, it comes back something com you do not want. Uh, complain it comes back changed. So when you take um, an emotion, let it out. Find a friend. You've all we all have that one friend that we can go. God dang it! I'm flagging blood and blood, blood, blood. You know you can you can vent to. Warn him before you vent to him, or you'll just completely blindside him and think he, you're talking about him. But vent to a friend. Just tell a friend, hey, I've got this issue, and I need to talk, and would you give me 10, 15 minutes to just, uh, just let me talk to you? If he's a good friend, he'll go, oh, yeah, sure, dude, what's going on? And you can just give him both barrels, and once you're finished and you've lanced the boil and you feel better, he, he may actually just go off and go, well, gee whiz, weenie. And friends have that amazing ability of just taking something and putting it back into perspective. And you may realize after you've said it all that, well, yeah, dude, he's going to be mad at you because you hadn't been doing what you're supposed to for the past week and a half. You know, they'll, the friends are going to let you know whether you're in the right or the wrong. And they're going to do it in a way that's not going to hurt your feelings a whole heap and lot. But, they're, you know, it may end up hurting your feelings a little bit, of course, but because uh, you're been venting about this thing and it's all of a sudden it's not quite as you know as bad in in their eyes but you can vent to them and they can give you a better sense of what's happening another way to prevent anger is when you feel anger coming on ask yourself why are you angry what is it that you've done that's just cause that that's causing this aggression this frustration what is it? Are you not? Are you, the wife not not being nice to you uh, on, on Friday nights, or, or what? What's going on? You can if you sit down and you sit back and you actually contemplate what is causing the causing the anger. You can usually find that it's 
something that in your mind is important but then you can also once you know the problem you can actually fix that problem and rectify the whole issue and be better off for it you basically take the pro the emotion that you're experiencing you work through it and then you realize and grow what it is and you grow from that emotion so ask yourself Anytime you feel angry, anytime you are having a mental argument with your spouse or your, or the boss or or, or your ex or your your you know, not your ex but um, your uh, your mother-in-law or whoever it is you happen to have a, be having a, a a mental argument with, ask yourself why? What's the purpose of this? Is it fixing anything? If it is, all right, then try figure out what it is that you're trying to fix. If it's not fixing anything, let it go, as as Elsa says. Another way is to exercise have you ever tried just exercising have you tried to be angry after exercising no you're too dang tired to be angry you can't just start throwing stuff around because you've done weights you've done today was arm day you're not going to throw a desk because your arms are rubber so try exercising dude it's it, it makes you feel it, it releases a lot of the endorphins and you feel good about it and you're you're it's a great uh it's a great sensation to have so exercise, um, walk, um, and and you'll find that uh, you look at the world in a completely different manner. Another way to actually do the uh, to, to to mitigate anger is to actually just meditate. Just sit back and alm and and just think about how you can control your thoughts and control those thoughts because those thoughts are. Often what causes us to get angry, we lay, take one thing, lead to another, lead to another, lead to another, and eventually we're, you know, we're, we're, we're chomping at the bit. We're, you know, we're screaming at, uh, at Junior because he just crop dusted you with the smelliest fart known to man. When in reality, you should be laughing about that. The important stuff is always the things that make you laugh, make you smile, and make you feel loved. To sit around and to any experience that makes you feel angry in reality is not worth your time. So let that time be of happiness. And the way you can do that is actually just by meditating. And another way to ensure that you are going to be happy and that you're going to stay happy is find out who your friends are. Are your friends these people who are going to rallies and going to political functions and they are going there and they are just protesting and throwing fits about this and that and these and those. I don't care if it's, you know, one per one side or the other. We have a whole bunch of people who are just flat out mad. They are angry because, you know, so and so isn't recognizing them for who they are. And it doesn't matter. So, but if you are hanging around people who are always angry, you're going to end up being angry also. If you're around people who are always being, you know, indignant because, you know, of this, well, you're going to decide, you know what, all right, I'm going to be indignant about that same thing also. Your choices are your choices, but your friends are an influence. Jim Rohn said, you are the uh, average of the five people you, uh, you spend time with. I actually like a modified version of that. You are the average of the five people you intentionally spend time with. Who do you intentionally spend the most time with? Those people are the ones who directly influence who you are. I told my kids as they were growing up, show me your friends and I will show you your future. My son has started to figure that one out and sadly my daughter is now just finally figuring that out um, and because of that it's a lot of lessons you have to learn you have to go through the tough parts of learning how to make a friend which is easy in hindsight but leading up to it it is the hardest thing you ever done hello Just had a hawk land in my tree. That was cool. So, and find these beautiful items like that. 
What are the magical, uh, awe-inspiring moments? You look at those, and if you're looking at life in that manner, you can't get angry. So, enjoy what is around you. You have the choice to be angry or to be full of love. How do you want to? How do you want to be? Choose one. And and I would recommend the love because it's fun, it's amazing, and it's harder to piss you off. <laughs> so, anyhow, folks, this is the uh, the the woolly getting woolly version. Yes, I hopefully here within the next month or so, maybe you will see me with a full beard. We'll find out. I'm, actually, I wanted to see exactly how much gray I've developed in here. Or, or not gray, blonde. How much blonde is it now in my in my beard? So, anyhow, folks, y'all take care. I love you dearly, and I thank you for the time that you have spent here. I know this was a long 15, 16 minute uh, uh, gab fest, and so with that, I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much. We will catch you next time. Love you lots. Bye.